thank you prash thanks for very kind introduction and um, really uh, it is a great honor uh, as a speaker you are inviting me under the eminence uh, purpose not the eminence scientist you can say because uh, i am the field from clinical side so i am just uh, choosing this topic because antibody uh, sars cov2 antibody is a very burning topic and most of the time what is required what should know uh, about the sars cov2 antibody i am going to share today my experience i think my screen is visible now okay thank you uh, i am going to start uh, disclaimer disclaimer is a very important because uh, whatever information i am going to provide in this presentation is based on my personal experience and does not constitute a legal liability or policy making the listener should make his or her own evaluation as to the appropriateness or otherwise of any experimental test described because we know uh, uh, sars cov2 is still we need to lot of learn uh, what are the various test methodology everything seems to be uh, uh, experimental and it is not yet proven what kind of test is 100% confirmatory when we are dealing with the sars cov2 uh antibody testing for sars cov2 this is my topic of today so much hype about uh, antibody testing for sars cov2 because uh, uh, initially when uh, we talked about the sars cov2 antibody in, i remember when it was introduced in uh, april month 2020 there was a lot of hypes regarding sars cov2 you can correlate with the your rt pcr result or you can correlate with the rat uh, rapid antigen testing but as per my experience sars cov2 antibody is a very limited test and it is going to help in only in certain uh, condition it is not going to give any kind of diagnostic importance a uh, little bit about sars cov2 virus it is the envelope with a single stranded rna genome uh, we know four coronavirus genera mainly alpha coronavirus Uh, beta coronavirus and gamma and delta which is prevalent in birds not in mammals and these are the strain 2020 new uh, ne and nl63 which is uh, alpha coronavirus and beta coronavirus which is the oc43 and hku1 and uh, other sars virus uh, which uh, prevalent during the uh, 2002 to 2003 that is the sars cov1 mers cov virus and sars cov2 virus sars cov2 virus as we witnessed is it was started in china in 20, 2019 and uh, still we are not able to crack the what is the exact pathogenesis what is the exact fate of this virus yes we believe it is going to be endemic very soon but still it is a hypothesis uh, frankly speaking uh, very little less know about the what is going to be happen in near future uh now what are the testing methods for sars cov2 virus are uh, present till date one is the molecular method to detect viral rna this is the most preferred method for direct diagnosing of covid-19 though numerous molecular test with the emergency use authorization are available and which target uh, nucleocaspase orf envelope and uh, rna dependent rna polymerase it is mostly performed on the upper and lower respiratory tract samples and many challenges associated with collection device and reagent supply chain issue initially antigen detection this is the second most common method for detection of sars cov2 virus uh, emergency authorization assays are available detects nucleocaspid protein most abundant viral protein from nasal to nasopharyngeal swabs it took only 15 minutes and it is mostly based on lateral flow immuno uh, fluorescent assay and the reported performance in uh, characteristic of this uh, lfa is 80 80% sensitive and 100% is specific and then sars cov2 serologic test initially the food and uh, fda did not require emergency use authorization for sars cov2 serologic test because antibody test we are not mean to be diagnostic and it is intended to be used to answer the question of prevalence manufacture do manufacturers were encouraged to apply for emergency use authorization if you search on the fda website so you can see more than 200 commercial available serological test for antibody detections are available and uh, you believe me more antibody test for sars cov2 than any other infectious disease is present 
the current status of antibody more than 200 commercially available serological tests are present and uh, a few clears the ua authorization no antibody tests are approved for the diagnostic point of view till date what are the variation encountered in sars cov2 serologic test design when we are talking about the what kind of format are present as of now so mainly three type of uh, serological test designs are available one is the lateral flow assay that is you can say is a card based test then uh, enzyme immunosorbent elisa based and then chemiluminescent immunoassay uh, my experience is much more on chemiluminescent assay because we started from clia uh, clia is the also short name of chemiluminescent immunoassay and uh, whatever we experienced uh, we experienced on the clia though uh, we took some reference from uh, published article for elisa and lfa but uh, as per my experience whatever uh, published article says clia is little bit more sensitive and more specific than rest of the counter uh, counter uh, uh, counter format assays mostly we are using serum or plasma finger stick or venous whole blood uh most of the time in this antibody detection we are detecting igm iga iga and total antibody but as per cdc covid-19 guideline which, which was published earlier in 2020 no advantage of testing for igg igm and igg or total testing for iga not recommended at all for sars cov2 antigen used are only s1 and s2 of spike protein and receptor binding uh, domain and nucleocaspid which is the most abundant viral protein present in the uh, sars cov2 virus these are the s1 this is the diagrammatical representation of sars cov2 and uh, various uh, antigen present on the uh, virus Uh, when we are comparing with the different uh, uh, serological method of antibody detection ortho uh, we are having much experience of ortho clinical diagnostic which detects uh, various protein target different different companies are having different different target and based on the some based on the clia principle some based on the elisa principles and some based on the lateral flow assay uh you can see uh, initially when it was launched to some antibody detected which called as a total which include all the antibodies then uh, after that more specific antibodies coming which is uh, uh, detecting only igg and what is the timing of antibody response to sars cov2 as we are aware we are uh, dealing with the novel virus novel coronavirus it is a new virus so that no pre existing antibodies or immunity present we are still learning about our immune response to sars cov2 virus because believe me when uh, covid uh, 19 was started and a patient was started admitted in our hospital and we got uh, this uh, because we are also participated in the placid trial from uh, sponsored by icmr and at that time when we started our trial uh, no kit was available to tell what kind of antibody what measure of antibody should be present in the plasma donor but at that time uh, after few days or few weeks uh, there is a uh, authorization by eua authorization of ortho ortho uh, clinical diagnostic kit and we started total antibody and igg antibody at that time uh, a lot of literature says antibody is present after 7 days after 10 days igm will start after 4 days but i will share i am having my uh, tabulated chart then i will show you ki, uh, what was my experience in antibody response at that time uh, this is the classical picture you can find in most of the published article uh, many develops antibody one to two weeks after the symptoms due to delay in serial conversion antibodies do not play a routine role in diagnosis but yes initially when it was launched uh, some uh, collaborative or you can say in conjunction with other test it was some uh, going to tell some help uh, in detecting the disease but it is not absolutely uh, as per my experience it was not a, a perfect measure to identify the covid-19 disease at that time 
many uh, 95 percent of patients are antibody positive after two weeks and this uh, picture i took from this uh, jama article and uh, where it says more than 90 percent of patients are antibody positive after two weeks some patient may not zero comment and it is also in my experience uh, those patients who are not zero convert it may be because of some kind of uh, immunostated, either they are immunodeficient, either they are on some kind of chemotherapy, or it also depends on ACA dependent. Previous article also says uh, the more severe disease uh, produce more robust antibody, but it is uh, not the case in every uh, condition because it varies. It is the biological rep response. You can't say if the uh, disease is more severe it produces most robust antibody. And I'm having also some supportive evidence for it. Uh, what was the reportable range of uh, SARS-CoV-2 antibody test? It does not apply to any assays. And reportable range must be determined if laboratories report results quantitatively and need to demonstrate quantitative accuracy and quantitative precision across reportable range. Uh, you, you can see there is a no, uh, no concordance with the quantitative results. If Euroimmune gives a, a 8 value, maybe uh, about give 4 value. 4 value, it depends on the signal to cutoff ratio because different kit are using different indexes to uh, measure the presence of antibody. When I am talking about uh, ortho, uh, ortho clinical diagnostic the value which we are getting we are getting in the form of signal to cutoff ratio and uh, accuracy when we are talking about the accuracy of these uh, antibody tests basically extent to which particular test is in agreement with the reference method or comparator or you can say trueness of that result ideal comparator is specimen from patient with known COVID-19 infection established through molecular testing and with the increasing prevalence of COVID-19 infection, most laboratories should be able to obtain these. Even we uh, validated our antibody kit on the basis of uh, correlation with the molecular testing. Uh, the determination of accuracy, as we know, ki, uh, any test is having uh, positive uh, positive, two positive, false, ne false positive, false negative, and two negative. On the basis of we can de uh, determine uh, sensitivity and specificity of that particular assay. And uh, in our experience, we determine our own sensitivity and specificity at our lab. And uh, again, this is the manufacturer specificity uh, studies done by the various companies. And uh, there is also seasonal coronavirus included in evaluation as per instruction for use, and you can say it's a costly activity with the other uh, coronavirus. Implementing SARS-CoV-2 serological testing, the most important part is the analytical interference, precision, what is the reportable range and accuracy, as we already mentioned, and what should we communicate to physician, and what should be the format of result reporting. But when we saw in our validation, no assay of COVID antibody is valid. Valid in the sense, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you can say, signal cutoff value. If suppose uh, we are getting signal cutoff value of four on uh, one uh, assay, the same sample on the same time on a different assay, it gives value of the 40. You can imagine there is a 10 times difference in the signal to cutoff value. So that's why we uh, think of we should not give report to the, our patient and uh, whatever we experience, because as I already mentioned, uh, what we have done serological antibody, we have done only for the uh, selection of our plasma donor. Otherwise, we are not promoting this COVID antibody for any diagnostic implication or even for to see the efficacy of vaccine. Why I will again, um, I am having few uh, charts. I will explain you the role of neutralizing antibody in protective immunity. Uh, as we know, protective immunity is a multifaceted anti antibodies can be binding or neutralizing. Binding neutralizing antibodies produced at a high levels but unable to independently prevent infection. 
bind and flag pathogen as an invader, and it is a good marker for prior infection. While neutralizing antibody, which is the um, uh, you can say it is the main antibody, uh, which causes loss of infectivity of the virus, and and the main purpose of neutralizing antibody, it blocks the viral entry to the host cell. And because of when uh, these antibody blocking viral into the host cell, of course, you can say uh, this is the most potent or you can say uh, whatever we are talking about the antibody, we should always focus on the neutralizing in uh, terms of neutralizing antibody because binding antibody may be present. It gives some kind of uh, correlation, but whatever uh, my experience, we should always look for the neutralizing antibody and but the the main issue with the neutralizing antibody it is not a commonly available test uh, agar if we are talking about uh, uh, plaque reduction neutralizing test it require bsl3 type of lab though few neutralizing antibodies assays are uh, if i am talking about gene script it is present which can be performed on uh, bsl2 lab but uh, the main our focus should be neutralizing antibody what the kind of even us fda initially released the one document those plasma donor who are having titer of more than 160 they are having good antibody titer and they are a good uh, candidate for the plasma donation and uh, Testing, uh, again, uh, we, uh, as we uh, uh, already told, this is the one of the most challenging tests of neutralizing antibody. What do we know about uh, neutralizing antibodies and immunity from other coronavirus? As we know, common coronavirus, it is a study done by uh, Wu LP and Tang F, and it was published in uh, Journal of Immunology uh, in 2011, I am talking about the previous coronavirus experience, the common coronavirus uh, volunteer studies, it's shown IgG peaks two weeks post-infection and decline over one year. And uh, after retesting at one year, 66% uh, said virus and none developed codes. This was the based on the previous coronavirus studies and the protective antibody levels thought to drop off at two years and uh, antibody maximum out three to four months post infections. And uh, in some cases, as you saw, uh, some coronavirus antibody declined to undetectable by six to seven years. But again, uh, uh, in my experience, uh, when uh, we took, we stored some samples for SARS-CoV-2 virus, and uh, yes, there is a certainly waning of antibody, but few of the samples are having same amount of antibody. So it depends on the, again, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you can say, unknown factors, why some samples, why some biological samples, even though they are, uh, keep, uh, we are keeping on the same temperature, same environment, but few samples are showing uh, waning of antibodies and few uh, samples are showing same amount of antibody. Uh, even uh, previous studies done on the recess uh, macarius studies, initial infection led to binding and neutralizing antibodies to spike protein all an, uh, animals and rechallenge on day 35 post initial infection, subgenomic messenger RNA levels significantly lower and no recoverable virus post day two, little to no clinical disease observed. And uh, again, this uh, data from Wu F. et al. It was uh, published in the preprint. And uh, neutralizing antibody in 175 recovered patient, titers peak 10 to 15 uh, days after symptom onset were variable. Uh, the unknown factors, what neutralizing antibody titers are clinic clinically significant? It's still, it is a big enigma for us uh, when we are uh, comparing all these data with the published articles, few articles says yes, it is the correlating, but most of the article says it is not going to correlate uh, with time and it is not going to correlate with the your uh, binding antibody which are able to detect in the routine SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, uh, we have done one study and this is uh, uh, this study is done in collaboration with the one of the premier hospital and uh, 
uh, there's a, a three centers involved in this study. And uh, what we found, uh, we correlate uh, this, our uh, orthoclinical uh, kit data with the SVNT. And this SVNT is the based on our gene script where we can say there's a little bit correlation of neutralizing antibody. And in that study, we found if the signal to cutoff value, uh, just I am uh, focusing here, according to this kit, if the value is coming more than one, then you can consider that particular sample is reactive for COVID antibody. But you can see our value is coming uh, 8.19. It means when the value is more than 8.19 signal cutoff ratio, then you can see that individual is having high titer or high neutralizing antibody activity. Again, uh, at that time, it was a lot confused, lot of confusion when we started and even we communicated to some international organizations uh, like Mayo Institute and John Hopkins. Uh, Dr. Thiel was is one of the pioneer who who has done a lot of studies on the COVID antibodies. And uh, she discussed with me because uh, according to US FDA, uh, United State FDA, they claim that if any individual is having signal to cut off value is more than 12, he or she can consider as a uh, uh, good donor for the, or you can say high titer plasma donor. But according to our study, it was a completely different because what we found, we found different signal cutoff value with the different, different lot. Uh, we used three different lots till date and lot number uh, was different, different. And out of which we got three to four times high signal cutoff value. It means there is no concordance with the signal to cutoff value at that time. And this is uh, when, uh, as our policy, when we started any case, we do robust validation before implementation. And you can see uh, sample number one, uh, value is coming 23.4. By different assay, by different company assay, the value is coming 8.13. And by the same company assay, but different uh, lot, this value is just uh, half about the previous value. The timing of the sample is same. The testing of the sample is same. Everything is the same, but you can see there is a huge difference in the different, different value. 24.2, we are getting on 7.73 on different assay and 11 again on the different lot. Again, you can see here, uh, this is the date of sample collection and uh, uh, we, keep one thing uniform whenever we tested we keep the day of collection and timing of testing uniform to each and every sample so that there is no bias because of uh, time difference and you can see again here uh, one sample is value giving signal cutoff value 17.8 and on different assay the value is coming 380 but what is important here here is important is the unit and most of the clinician, even most of the my uh, clinician friend who is working with me are not able to understand. You are telling this person is having the signal uh, uh, value of uh, uh, 17 and uh, on the different lab is giving 380. What is going to be wrong? Um, nothing is wrong. Everything is perfect because the unit is different and this is not the measure of uh, this antibody. This, uh, again, you can see both assays are correct at their own level because, again, we are talking about uh, this assay, the signal cutoff value is 1 and the value is coming 17.8. When we are talking about diasorin, uh, the value is coming uh, more than 15 AU per ml is considered as a reactive. Just like that, when we um, uh, do a study with the temperature, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of differences we observed. Again, uh, we you can see uh, signal cutoff value of twelve on one lot with the same lot after uh, just uh, thirty, ten, and nineteen. Just you can see after uh, within a difference of twenty days. If we are keeping the sample at 4 degrees Celsius, you can observe there is a negligible antibody at 4 degrees. But at minus 40, 
uh, there was some amount of antibody. It uh, we have done on different temperature, different environment to see the performance of all the assays. So this was my experience. Most of the time, we should not believe uh, what the value is coming. Just we have to focus on either is coming reactive or not reactive according to that manufacturer instructions. If the value is coming more than that, uh, don't uh, rush for the value. Don't even bother about the value. Ki what is my value? My value is high or my value is low? No, it is not like that. If you are having uh, um, in a positive, uh, 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 you, say, you can say single cutoff value, then you are a reactive for antibody. Uh, this is my first uh, validation study when we received the kit in the month of uh, July 2020. Again, uh, a very beautiful observation at that time because uh, the signal cutoff value according to the company was less than, uh, uh, less than one is considered as negative and more than one is considered as a positive. But what we observe, uh, we can, you can see uh, we uh, took at least 10 to 20 healthy volunteers at that time. And we did RT-PCR. RT-PCR was uh, negative. And then we did antibody test and the antibodies coming completely neg uh, negative. So you can say they are a very uh, unexposed uh, persons in the month of April or May. And again, you can see this picture. The value is coming less than one, but as per my experience, this value is uh, uh, more than zero, 0 0.18, 0 0.24. What we observed, both are RT-PCR positive. So what we, uh, uh, what we decided, we decided at that time, if any value is coming to zero or 0 0.01, we took only uh, those individuals as a complete negative and we established one terminology that is known as the indeterminate. If any value is coming more than 0.1 to 0.99, so you can't say that individual having uh, that individual having prior infection or not. But we need to keep in the gray area on the basis of these experience because uh, at that time um, uh, we did few RT PCI in those patients and they are giving some kind of uh, some kind of reactivity. Uh, uh, I am whenever I am going to present uh, this topic SARS-CoV-2 antibody, I always took the reference of this paper, and this is the very beautiful paper published in the Journal of Clinical Virology, where you can see there is a no correlation between severe, moderate antibody. Even neutralizing antibody titer is not uh, going to correlate with the severity of the disease. You can see, uh, in spite of severe disease, MNT titer was 80 and antibody was 5.663, that is the index value. And moderate, you can see, uh, neutralizing antibody value is more in moderate condition than severe condition. And here, uh, you can see there is a no uh, big difference in the uh, antibody index. Just like if we do this, uh, uh, this correlated with the different uh, assay, this value comes negative, means patient had disease, patient had severe disease, patient had neutralizing antibody test, patient had a positivity with the one assay, but just you see, it came negative by different assay. Okay, again, it depends on uh, this profile, uh, what antigen they included, okay. They included N antigen, S1 and uh, uh, in uh, lesion, they included S1 and S2. There's a lot of variability and common person not able to understand if what is going to be happen. I am not having any antibody. One lab says uh, this much amount of antibody, a second lab says this much amount of antibody. So uh, because of all these regions, we, uh, we, uh, we discussed with our, uh, our colleagues and we not implemented as a diagnostic tool at our institute this COVID antibody. This we used only for the just uh, prevalence of the disease and just for the monitoring of the COVID plasma donors. Again, this article published in the JAMA, uh, they clearly mentioned the flawed science of antibody testing for SARS-CoV-2 immunity. Uh, 
uh, just you uh, focus on this line. Uh, for the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines uh, revived DNA test in serology, could a simple blood test reveal whether the vaccine was working or later if it is what time for booster shot? FDA clearly denied. No, says the uh, which discourages antibody testing as they do it yourself immunity check, and it was published in the communication by the JAMA. And again, various agency from time to time uh, stated that results from currently authorized SARS-CoV-2 antibody test should not be used to evaluate a person's level of immunity or protection from COVID-19 at any time, and especially after the person received a COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, why? Because uh, as we know, antibody production is mainly from the adaptive immunity and it is only mainly from the B cell. I am going to one slide on the T cell. What, are, what kind of response we observed? One is the innate, second is the adaptive and, and adaptive B cell and T cell. And when we observe T cell response, it is a very much possible that in persons with low level of neutralizing antibody, the innate immune response and the T cell response clear the virus. And some study shows the person exposed to SARS-CoV-2 may develop virus specific T cell response without detectable circulating antibodies. And this may mean that persons who had mild COVID-19 or were asymptomatic can generate memory T cell response to prevent recurrent infection in the absence of antibodies. Uh, my take on this, if you are vaccinated, if you receive your vaccination, don't ask for the your antibody level. If you are not having any good antibody or antibody, it doesn't mean you are not protective. It, means doesn't, it doesn't mean you are not uh, immune. And some T cells in person without exposure to SARS-CoV-2 have been found to cross-react with the SARS-CoV-2 and it is possibly due to a prior exposure of other coronavirus. And this may mean that persons with reactive T cell will get less severe disease if exposed to SARS-CoV-2 disease or virus. Uh, then uh, I am coming, uh, what are the interpretation of results from antibody test for SARS-CoV-2 who are doing this test? What is the implication of uh, positive and negative? If negative results comes, likely no prior infection or exposure to the virus in the past. Individual tested too soon following infection or immunosuppressed patient may be negative. And a small percentage of individuals may not zero convert. Positive result being suggest recent or past infection and may be impacted by the local and regional prevalence. What these results do not tell us when the patient was infected, whether they are shedding virus live or dead, whether patient individuals are protected against reinfection. Again, it was a very burning question most of the time. I am having this much amount of antibody. Uh, may I reinfect or not? No, we don't know. Cannot use positive results to guide decisions regarding adherence to social distancing recommendation or use of personal protective uh, equipments. How should patient with positive results be managed? As uh, we know, interim guidelines for COVID-19 antibody testing, it was uh, most of the guidelines on the this uh, was published to the CDC only. It cannot be assumed that individuals with truly positive antibody test results are protected from future infection. In spite of even in the second wave, uh, we are the witness of so many uh, of our doctor colleagues who are having very good am amount of uh, antibody, but in spite of that, uh, uh, they infected. So this was a real experience. This antibody is not going to tell you you are going to uh, reinfect or not infect in the near future. And asymptomatic without recent history of COVID-19 follow general recommendation to prevent infection. Uh, initially, we thought that uh, this antibody is also going to use as a uh, immunity passport, but uh, this concept was not fruitful. And uh, this concept was withdrawn by most of the uh, societies and organization. Asymptomatic patients with compatible or confirmed COVID-19 follow previous uh, guidance regarding uh, resumption of normal activities, including work. No change in clinical practice or use of personal protective equipment by healthcare. 
uh, again it was a uh, one of the major question if i am having antibody we should use pp or not no you should use you should use all the pp and you should follow all the protocols which uh, uh, follow by the normal person and additional consideration serological test should not be used to make decision about admitting persons to congregate settings and returning person to the workplace and uh, the proposed use for SARS-CoV-2 serological testing was diagnosis, limited utility can be offered as an adjunct, or you can say in concurrent testing with the other. If uh, uh, initially when the RT-PCR was not coming positive and someone said Ki, on the basis of IgM, we can correlate, but this was the correlation. You can't solely depend on the, the serological testing as an adjunct for those who present late or have suspected false negative upper respiratory samples and lower respiratory samples cannot be collected. And this was the published in the CDC guideline. For epidemiological studies, useful. Assay has adequate specificity used to screen high p-test probability population and used as a part of two assay algorithm. And identification of conversion plasma donors, yes. Uh, in India, it was uh, not recommended by the ICMA, but still conversion plasma is uh, 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 taken by the in US in uh, American Association of Blood Bank. They recommended if the tighter value of neutralizing antibodies more than 1 is to 1 is to 60. Evaluation of immune response to candidate vaccine. For the lesser extent, you can uh, do it, but uh, again, uh, major tech, uh, you should not. Uh, say that if you are having this antibody, so you are protected or not protected. You can, it is just for the research purpose or you're for, uh, you can say for your study purpose or you're for um, just to see the immune response of individuals. For these things, you can use this uh, test. Uh, what are the key points in implementation of SARS-CoV-2 serological testing? Wide variety of commercial assay with the emergency authorization uh, available. Analyt uh, there's an analytical interference, precision, reportable laying, and accuracy. Verification studies should be performed to integrate assay pitfalls and proposed use. Sensitivity across disease duration, major challenge. Specificity in pre-outbreak samples and those without antibodies to other res respiratory infections. And high specificity required for population screening. Testing should not be offered without providing, this is the most important point. Testing should not be offered without providing education regarding pitfalls and utility of that particular test and should not be used as a standalone diagnostic test. My take is to not be used as a diagnostic test. Positivity does not necessarily equate to immunity. And this is all about uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, you can ask me question and uh, I think if time permits, I, I can take one or two question or uh, you can drop me your question on uh, this, uh, my mail ID. And uh, thank you very much. Raj, can I just say a few words? There are questions actually. They are just uh, a few suggestions and comments. Not suggestions, comments, I should say. Uh, Raj, can I go on? Okay. Uh, like, uh, I wish to share some of the insights which we have gained from the ICMR National Institute of Virology because the serology of COVID 19 was a hot topic since the beginning of the pandemic. So our institute has done substantial work in this field, and I can certainly share some of the insights. If like almost two years into the pandemic, we can certainly say, like if we really ask about what is the role of serology of COVID-19 in diagnosis, it is practically nil. <clears throat> we for diagnosing the primary infection and also for predicting immunity against SARS-CoV-2, we don't really see any role in the routine conventional serology of detecting IgM or IgG antibodies. This is one precious lesson that we have had. And uh, let me, I'll just come back to the point once again. And let me also add here that my institute, ICMR, 
National Institute of Virology has done substantial amount of validation of the serological test kits, which started pouring into the Indian market very early into the pandemic. We had, uh, we have till date, we have evaluated I think more than uh, or close to 300 uh, serological test kits for COVID-19, which claim to detect uh, IgM antibodies, IgG antibodies, or a combination thereof, or even total antibodies. <clears throat> I don't know what exactly the manufacturers mean by that. Maybe a mix of all these antibodies. And what we have found is that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, a substantial number of these kits were uh, made by made um, uh, in countries outside India, and a few of them were in, uh, made in India. What we found consistently that is, was that uh, these kits, when um, majority of them did not make the mark, and what made the mark made up to the mark was mostly IgG detection kits. And uh, in uh, detecting IgG, most of these were like major failures. And even when they detected IgG, we didn't know what exactly is the role for it. And now we have more clarity into the role of detection of IgG or its rather lack of use in COVID-19. So that was one. And uh, uh, we did have a lot of Indian companies also who made this kit from, I think, uh, um, assembled components or whatever. And in the ICMR website, you can see a section which uh, lists out those serological test kits which have met the validity criteria. It is regularly being updated and uh, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Jaiswal actually listed out a lot of companies who bring out such kind of kits, but the list is huge and we definitely have a lot of Indian companies which uh, have also been making such kits and whose uh, kits have been validated successfully. But this was only like a fraction of those kits which reached us for validation. So that, that was about validation. Uh, even though some of them made the mark, we still do not see any real value of them in uh, primary diagnosis of COVID or in uh, determining the immunity against COVID-19. And uh, the uh, other thing is that <clears throat> we know even uh, like at this uh, test, uh, this point in the pandemic, the next best thing to an accurate correlate of immunity against COVID-19 remains neutralizing, neutralizing antibodies itself. But this is like a very uh, slippery target because we know that it's a very moving target, you know, strain after strain coming to circulation. So unless we do a live virus neutralization assay, meaning that you have to uh, incubate the patient's serum sample with a live strain of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, we are not going to get uh, any accurate or any uh, closer to reality kind of a co correlative protection. But even this is difficult. This being the uh, next best thing to an accurate estimate, even that is difficult because we have alpha, beta, gamma, and now the Omicron is also going out. And publication after publication has shown that there is a definite difference in neutralization, neutralizing antibody titer uh, to against these uh, viruses, I mean, these strains. Okay, and uh, uh, there are we have seen several fold changes in the neutralization efficacy against specific strains, even in the sera of recovery individuals. So this is a difficult thing. But even then, we can say that if anything correlates even remotely to protective immunity, it is neutralizing the antibody titer. But then you need to do a live virus neutralization assay using the viral strains in question. So there is almost no real utility in the conventional serology in estimating protective immunity against COVID-19. And uh, we uh, should also select uh, if we put so, so, so sorry for the taking to yes. I am I am completely agree with the last point because it is a very valid point and uh, um, the only test which can tell is the neutralizing antibody and these all all the surrogate antibody measures and she is not going to tell the real story of your antibody. And even when I'm sh I shared one uh, paper from Journal of Virology, even in that condition, neutralizing antibody is not necessary correlating with the your disease condition. So there's a lot of variation, lot of variability. We are not uh, mm, very much sure ki, mm, uh, if you are having this particular amount of neutralizing antibody you have detected or not. Lot of lot of uh, mm, you can say lot of study is still need to be done on these uh, very important topic but uh, my take on this uh, we should not consider antibody as a diagnostic measures diagnostic test we should not take antibody as your immunity level 
and uh, this is uh, all about from my side and whatever i shared I, it is was pure my experience and based on some published article and uh, uh, you can see a lot of published articles in the uh, pubmed uh, journals pubmed uh, platform but uh, i took only those which is correlating with my findings okay so it might be opposite and uh, Absolutely, sir. Your talk was a very comprehensive one. You you discussed at length about it, so it was like a very comprehensive presentation. And you know, all these kind of publications uh, actually are confusing people. But then yes. this is reality. And I think as we are like going into it, we see that a hybrid immunity. We are getting to realize that it is probably a mix of cell mediated immunity, which is playing a greater role probably, along yes. with replacing antibodies, which is protecting us from COVID nineteen. Thank you so much. I'm so Thank sorry you. for having exceeded my time. Thank you, thank you a lot. You know, it was very useful information. I have no experience on that. Uh, we are using uh, orthoclinical diagnostic and mostly it says G1, G2, but again, we, uh, we didn't uh, classify G1, G2, G3, G4. So we can say confidently only G because we didn't uh, classify as per uh, class of subclass of IgG. This is the LFA. She's talk about LFA. Uh, again, um, uh, I already uh, um, mentioned in my title, I am sharing my experience. I have no experience on an LFA. Yes, we correlated because a few of my friends uh, coming with the LFA test and they said, no, this the LFA is negative. No, no, it is not negative. So LFA, as per my experience, is not as a sensitive and specific for a COVID-19 antibody test. When we are talking about the sensitivity and specificity, CMIA and CLIA is more sensitive and more specific than any other platform-based test, just like a, either LFA, even they are more specific and sensitive than ELISA. About, about, yes, theoretically it is the more sensitive because we are using both. We are having uh, this uh, COBAS platform and uh, we are having uh, ortho. So we didn't find any much different. Both are, yes, theoretically CMI is more advanced version, but as per my experience, uh, sensitivity, as far as concern of sensitivity, both are the same. Rash, you can't believe uh, you can't believe me. Uh, initially, when this test was launched, the sensitivity and specificity was done only on the hundred or two hundred samples. It was not a giving true picture of that. But after that, uh, sensitivity and specificity comes. And uh, right now, uh, I think uh, just I uh, refer one article in any AGM. They uh, I think they have done testing in more than uh, six lakhs individuals. So. Uh, Sensitivity and specificity a little bit improves. Uh, when the our sample size is more, sensitivity and specificity comes in more robust way. When the, our sample size is low, we are not able to give exact picture of sensitivity and specificity. Yes, the role of a statistician and role of scientists like you is very important because most of the time when we are busy in our dealing with the patient on clinical assay, and even we discuss with you, I am having good number of uh, this uh, data and uh, if you wanted to come with us please come and join us we will publish a beautiful article because uh, whatever we are having we are having validated data
थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच thank you <laughs> thank you 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 th